Hey everybody, I've had some interest on the channel lately in Melodyne. Melodyne is a really powerful and really deep vocal processing plugin, and a lot of people peg it as something that is just used for vocal tuning. Well, I use it for a lot of things other than vocal tuning. I use it for manual gain adjustment of every syllable in a vocal so that it bypasses a lot of the need for compression and limiting. I use it to be able to split off and process sibilants and plosives separately so you can do things like manual de-essing and ensuring that the vocal tuning algorithm is not pitching the sibilants and plosives. There's a lot of amazing pro tips and best practices that I learned from one of the best engineers in the world, somebody who has processed vocals for Adele and Amy Winehouse and, and whatnot. So I would like to share that process with you. What I've done is I've taken a full module that I did in one of our courses at Warp Academy on Melodyne, and I'm going to give it to you guys for free over the next couple of minutes. So buckle up, watch the process in Melodyne, and I hope you get a lot out of it. If you enjoy that and you want to see all of the other aspects that I do to process vocals and get them sounding clean and professional and, and dialed, then I'm also going to give you that full vocal production course for free. There's a link below in the description and in the cards. You can check that out. And I hope you enjoy the video. Cheers. I'm stoked to share some information about vocal tuning. Vocal tuning is a key part of all modern music. It's no longer possible to have a vocalist record and not touch up at least a little bit the tuning to have it sound at a professional caliber. And the tool that I use for this is Melodyne. Specifically, the one I'm running right now is Melodyne Editor 4. And they just came out with a new version, Melodyne 5, which I haven't checked out yet, but I'm stoked to take a peek at it. So although you could conceivably tune vocals without any additional plugins manually just by using Transpose, I really don't recommend that. One is it's so time-consuming that you may as well have paid for the plugin in the amount of lost productivity that you're going to have by tuning it manually, and you're also never going to get the best results. So I highly recommend using a plugin for this. There are a variety of plugins you can use. You could use Auto-Tune by Antares. Waves has a tuning plugin, but I don't recommend using any of those unless you're trying to go for that hard-tuned hip-hop sound that's, that's very, very distinct. The reason why I don't recommend these plugins is because they're not advanced enough. They don't give you enough control. When you're doing vocal tuning, those tools will typically flatline the audio because they're very limited. So they'll take out the nuance of the vocal and things like vibrato will get lost, little nuances in the vocal. Whereas Melodyne being a much more sophisticated platform for vocal tuning and processing it allows you to preserve a lot of the human element and nuance in the vocal. So let's get into it. What I do is I line up, we're using the, the main lead vocal in this track here, and I line that up with an instrumental of the song. I like to have the instrumental in the background so that I know exactly where the pitch should go. In some cases, if you have pre-composed the vocal melody, you're going to actually have MIDI of that. And I would play that with a piano in the background to, to get the vocal tuning. But in this case, I didn't do that. The vocalist came up with her own melody and I'm just using the instrumental. The reason I use the instrumental in the background is if a vocal word syllable is pretty far out, then vocal tuning software could put it to the wrong note. And that may sound correct to your ears if you're listening just to the vocal and solo, but if you listen to it against the instrumental, it'll usually pop out very clearly as the wrong semitone movement, and then you can back it out to the correct semitone. Okay, so I have the instrumental soloed, I have the main vocal soloed, and let's go ahead and grab Melodyne. Now you'll notice in my Ableton Live project, I'm using collections up here. This is new in Live 10, and I highly recommend that if you're producing any type of vocals, you name one of your collections after vocal processing and have your effects in there. I also do a lot of tutorials and voiceover work. So I have my collection here called vocal effects and audio repair. And this is what I use for processing spoken or sung vocals. You'll see here, I've got Melodyne and we're going to take Melodyne and we're going to drop it as a insert effect directly on the lead vocal. Now, Melodyne needs to capture the audio. So you need to actually play the audio into Melodyne in real time. Normally what I would do is I would play 
the entire length of the full vocal performance into Melodyne while it's transferring or capturing. I'm not going to do that today just for time. I'm actually going to work with a small vocal loop. So I'm going to just take this piece of the vocal. I'm going to loop it up in live. And here's what we do. I'll expand Melodyne a little bit so we can really see what's going on. So uh, yeah, all I do is I click transfer right here, and then I play the vocal. I put on a brave face Trying to get this bit It tastes from my mouth I don't have much faith Okay, great. So it has now recorded the vocal performance and it's split that vocal up onto what it thinks are the correct notes. Now, a couple things about Melodyne setup is you can have it uh, be forcing to a particular scale if you want to. And this version of Melodyne is also polyphonic. So this could handle chords from a piano or a guitar or a horn section. In this case, I have it just reading a monophonic vocal. The algorithm is melodic standard, okay? And this is because the vocal singing a melody. You can have it percussive, universal, polyphonic, sustain or decay. This would be if you're using chords. And then we have other options here that you can have. You can enable snapping, chromatic snapping. You can have uh, particular scales that you can put in there if you want to. And uh, I have this just using the chromatic mode. It's not forcing it into a particular scale. Okay, so that's, that's how we have Melodyne set up. To be able to zoom in in Melodyne, we can just click and drag up and down. Awesome. So Melodyne has started off by detecting what it thinks is the correct note. And you can see some of them are a little bit off and that's to be expected. These are called blobs. That's literally the Melodyne terminology for them. They call them blobs, which I love. And each one of these blobs is split as a syllable. And then you can see the little dark red waves inside of those. That's the actual pitch variation of the audio inside the blob. So that's typically vibrato or things like pitch slides, grace notes, and things like that that the vocalist is doing. So now that we've played this in and captured it into Melodyne, Melodyne is going to be the audio that is playing back. So if we adjust this up, that's going to play back. I put on a brave face. Right? Not what we want, obviously. Let's undo that. And one thing I do like about Melodyne is it will take a command Z undo function, which not all plugins will. That's cool. But if we disable Melodyne just by going like that, we're going to hear the raw original audio. Beauty. So let's get into how to process it. I'll have to admit, I avoided using Melodyne for a long time personally, because when I opened it up, I found it pretty intimidating to look at. And there's a lot of tools and a lot of different ways of using it. So what I ended up doing is finding an engineer who all he does is tune vocals. It's a mix engineer at Metropolis Studios, London, UK. And he's worked a lot with um, some of the larger artists that are doing vocals. And I was able to work with him directly and figure out a lot of the hacks that he was using. So the process that I'm going to be sharing with you guys today is just the bare essentials to be able to do this as quickly as possible while retaining really good results. So the first thing we're going to do is highlight all of the blobs. And we're going to right click, we're going to use the main pitch tool, and we're going to double click a blob. And that's going to lock each one of them into the closest semitone. That's going to get us close. Okay, so let's listen to this. I put on a brave face Trying to get this bit It tastes from my mouth I don't have much faith Okay, and it's gotten most of that right, but I'm definitely hearing a wrong note. And this is why it's so critical to have the backing or instrumental track. I can see this is the correct note, and she tries to hit that same note again, but she was sharp, and Melodyne has taken this and corrected it up to the wrong semitone. So I can simply take that, drag that down, double click it to center it, and that should sound correct now. There's also something else I'm hearing. If I really scroll in, there's a note that I'm hearing right here where you can see the pitch modulation goes way up. And that to me indicates that she's actually sliding into that note like a grace note. And this should not be all one blob. So you got to look for stuff like that. You should also be able to hear it. And the way I correct that is by using the note separation tool. So this allows me to take this and say, no, Melodyne, these are actually supposed to be two different notes. I double click and we can see that note automatically just latches up there. And again, we'll go to the pitch tool, double click or move it around and center it in on the 
close to semitone. So let's listen to this now, see what we have. I put on a brave face Trying to get this bit of taste from my mouth I don't have much faith Okay, cool. Now what we're seeing inside these blobs is we're seeing these red lines here that indicate that is vibrato. So we see the center of the pitch, which is the blob, but then we also see the modulation inside that particular note. And this is where Melodyne really excels, is it allows you to manipulate this stuff independently. So you can use the pitch modulation tool, which is the heaviest handed of all the tools. You can highlight everything, and if you want that hard-tuned, lifeless T-Pain share effect. You just double click, everything flatlines, and now you have robot voice. I put on a brave face Trying to get this bit of taste from my mouth well, Unless you're trying to make a hip-hop track, um, probably not that useful for you. I think this sounds terrible. I think it's overused. Please, please stop doing this. Um, <laughs> I'm talking to the music industry here, not you guys, but I just wish people would stop doing this. This is so like 1997 or whenever that came out, right? Um, this has been overdone and it's so obvious and it just, it's terrible. As an engineer, I, I hate hearing stuff like this. It just takes all the nuance out of things. So let's undo that and let's go and use a more gentle tool, which is the pitch drift tool, okay? So I take everything, highlight it and watch what's happening with the modulation. It just reins it in a little bit, keeping the nuance. This sounds very different. It's, it's bringing it closer to center while still preserving the humanity of the vocal. I put on a brave face Trying to get this bit of taste from my mouth Okay, awesome. Now from there, you can go back to the pitch tool highlight everything and double click to recenter it. You may or may not see some very small adjustments here now that the vibrato has been normalized a little bit, okay? The other thing I'll say is I avoid pitching breaths and plosives and sibilance. So uh, a breath, obviously it's breath, <gasps> things like that. You have sibilance, s -s -f -f -f, stuff like that that's really harsh, that does not pitch well. It sounds unnatural when Melodyne or any other program tries to pitch it. And then you have plosives, puh, puh, fuh, stuff like that, that also doesn't pitch well. Now, she's not rapping into the mic, so there's very little or none in the way of plosives, but there are some sibilants and some breaths. So what I use to deal with those is I use the note separation tool. And this is a breath, so I click that. You can see its pitch position move. So it was being pitched by Melodyne when it thought that was all one blob because it's trying to center everything, the average of that blob. But now that I've split that out, it goes to its natural pitch and that will sound better. Also, there's a breath here and likely here. Okay, and now that's moved some things around. So again, we have this iterative process of going back to our pitch tool and recentering things. And, uh, the other thing that I can do here in Melodyne is I can adjust the amplitude of these individual blobs. And that's very useful when it comes to sibilants and plosives. Of course, you can deal with, with sibilants and plosives and breaths using plugins. But if you don't have to do that, it means less plugins in your chain, less CPU load, and maybe less plugins that you need to buy because you can actually do this stuff manually. So it's very common to be quite meticulous in this stage with all of the individual elements of the vocal. So if I want this breath to be less obtrusive, I can reduce it in volume by clicking and dragging down with the amplitude tool. Same thing here. And if there's an S or an F somewhere, I think this one is a piece that's quite sibilant. If we move in here and we split that off, we go to our amplitude tool, we reduce that. Let's have a quick listen. I put on a brave face, Johnny yeah, awesome. You can hear that breath has been reduced and the sibilance has been reduced. That's cool. And now that we've done some light adjustments there, we can get on with our vocal tuning. Now, we oftentimes will want to use the pitch modulation tool. I just won't use it to flatline stuff like that, unless you're intentionally going for that as an effect. What I use it for is just to rein in 
vibrato that's a little bit too much for me. And a lot of singers tend to go nuts on the vibrato. Um, Cora is a very well-trained, very professional vocalist. Her stuff's great, but there are a couple areas where I want to bring the vibrato in a bit more to center. And I can do that just by clicking and dragging and bringing that in a little bit. You will see this particular note here is quite interesting because the pitch stays relatively stable and then it goes quite wide halfway through the note. So this is another hack. Use the note separation tool, split the first half of the note, and then you take the second half of the note with the pitch mod tool, and you can get a bit more heavy handed with that. And that way it leaves the nuance in the introductory part of that note. Very cool technique. Okay, so I'm just reining those guys in. And let's have a good listen. I put on a brave face, trying to get this bit of taste from my mouth. I don't have much faith. I put on. Cool. And as you're adjusting the pitch modulation, you are also going to be wanting to go back and recenter things by double clicking with the main pitch tool. And this double clicking process doesn't always get it bang on. It usually gets pretty close, but you may need to go in and manually adjust things yourself by ear, again, with the backing track on so you can really hear the, the pitch nuances. So you may find yourself making micro adjustments like that as you go through. Okay, the final thing that I'll say in the tools that I use is I, I use the amplitude tool to do some manual compression. You saw me use it earlier to reduce the volume of breaths and plosives and sibilants, but you can also use it to kind of do a pre-compression stage. So rather than having your compressor or compressors be doing all the heavy lifting and potentially producing artifacts and modulation distortion as compressors do, you can just go in and manually adjust any syllables in here that are slightly sub-audible. You know, that's the thing about a lead vocal is you need to have every word heard to convey the message in the song. And so I also find myself in this stage going through and doing mild adjustments to the volume levels of each individual blob. Let's go ahead and do that. I put on a brave face Trying to get this bit of taste from my mouth I don't have much faith. I put on a break. Great. Now, some of you might be asking, well, can't you do timing adjustments in Melodyne? Because that's often needed with a vocal. They never get bang on, and you oftentimes need to move some of the syllables around. So yes, you can. There is a time tool in Melodyne, but I do not recommend using it because live actually handles the timing of adjustments way, way more easily and quickly than Melodyne does. I find Melodyne really frustrating and finicky to use these um, time handle tools and things like that. Whereas in live, it's actually super fast and, and way easier to adjust the timing of the vocal. So let's go ahead and take a look at once we're done the vocal processing, how we go about uh, dealing with converting this down to audio. So I'm going to take this track I'm going to duplicate it and I'm just going to take the original that we were working with here and I'm going to split out and delete the rest of the performance. So we are going to get rid of anything that happens after. So we just have the part that's been tuned and I like working in little loops like this as I go through. So I might play the entire thing into Melodyne and then I just loop up and go you know, phrase by phrase doing the tuning. That way it allows me to really focus in with the loop on. So let's pretend like I've done that with the entire vocal and now it's time to convert this to audio. So what I would do here is I would go right click and go freeze track. This is gonna print the audio with Melodyne on it. To be able to do this non-destructively, that's why I've left this copy in case I wanna go back and touch up the tuning. Melodyne is still there and it's got it in the audio buffer. And this is our version and we just go and flatten now. So now this is the printed version of the audio with the Melodyne tuning on it. And then we can go inside of live and this is where I do my timing adjustment. So I go through and I, I just click in and add warp markers where I need to and adjust the timing of the vocal. And it's so much faster doing it that way than with Melodyne. One final thing I'll say here is that the warp mode has to be correct. The warp mode that I really like using for vocals is tones because tones is for monophonic material. Or alternatively, you could use Complex Pro, which sometimes produces better quality results because of its oversampling algorithm. All right. So there you have it, folks. That's the quick and dirty version of how I tune and process vocals using Melodyne. 
Right on. That's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed that one and got a lot out of the video. If you want to continue your education around vocal production, then remember that I'm giving away the full vocal production course for free. There's a link below in the video description and in the cards. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do. Drop me a comment, let me know what you thought about this one, and if you have any questions or any requests for upcoming videos. I wish you all the best with your music, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.